Okay, well, thought I'd do a video about um, you guys out there that want to be civilian sheepdogs, right? Now, not saying anything bad, you know, I respect that. I'm trying to keep organization, trying to take care of people, try to keep things under control in your neighborhood and your community. I get that, and I respect that. But what I'm saying is that there's a couple things you need to think about and consider, right? Like uh, the old saying, you want to play like a big dog, you got to pay like a big dog. So let's go over a couple things, all right? First off, if you're the um, you know, security sheepdog, you're probably going to be walk, you know, keep enforcing laws of some sort, protecting people. But um, really, first off, on what authority do you have to enforce rules on anyone? Unless, unless you're part of a community security plan, right? You have to get, you have to get that first. You can't just, uh, you know, throw on your vest, grab your rifle. Okay, look, this is what we're going to do here. I'm in charge. Right? That's not going to work. You're going to have people turn against you that way. Right? They're going to see you as a threat. You're the guy that's got guns and they see you all loaded up. You know, you're going to become the threat. So you need to have some kind of community to watch. Do it together. You know, you need to be part of a... Um, like a, a community watch or neighborhood watch right now while things were okay. That way, later on, you can make the transition. You and some of the other people in that neighborhood watch would probably become some sort of defense team or something. Now, <clears throat> it may not be that easy to tell the good guys from the bad guys. Imagine that uh, you're, if you're running checkpoints doing patrols, odds are, you know, your security team is also kind of some sort of law enforcement for the community itself. So again, it may not be that easy to tell good guys from bad. Let's say you see two guys fighting over food, right? And uh, they're both claiming that it's theirs. And they're both claiming the other guy's trying to take it from them. Now, neither one of these guys are going to be dressed up like a hamburger, so it's going to be pretty hard. And imagine they're both people that you know. What would you do? Do you make them share the goods? Because obviously, <clears throat> that supplies belongs to one of them. So if you made them share, that means that uh, the guy that's trying to steal them gets 50% of the other guy's goods. Of course, you can... You can probably ask them, you know, what's in the bag, but then they could both know. I mean, the owner might know exactly what's there. Maybe the other guy ran out of his house and he saw him running out with stuff. So he doesn't know what's in that bag. Maybe the guy that was stealing, you know, he has a good idea because he was picking out through the guy's stuff. Right? You never know. Maybe it was a bag that was already set up. Maybe it was like a bug out bag with food or something. So maybe the owner knows what's in it and the other guy doesn't. You, you know, you couldn't just tell like that. But uh, do you make them share the goods when it obviously only belongs to one of them and the the liar gets 50% of the, of the other guy's goods? Do you stay out of it and just let them figure it out with fisticuffs? Right? What are you going to do about that? What if you make the wrong decision? What about favoritism? People lying, or bribes, or threats. And let's say somebody was guilty of being a thief or something. Or accused of rape, or, or something, or, or accused of arson. What do you do? Do you lock them up? If they're innocent, or, you know, until you find out. And if not, they get away. And if they are guilty, do you lock them up where? You, I don't think you can just shoot somebody. You know, even if you caught him burning down a home, do you have the right to just shoot them? I mean, if things straighten out, man, then you're going to have to answer for that. 
Look at Katrina. It was a total shit at the fan scenario there. You had these cops that killed people. Was it Der- Derringer Bridge or something like that? And uh, they falsified evidence. You know, they, they there was all this stuff going on. But afterwards, when it all settled down, you know, got four or five cops accused of murder. And they, uh, you know, they, then they got an answer for it. I'm not saying the same thing. Obviously, if you murder some guy and falsify evidence, that's one thing. But still, if you were to execute somebody, you know, for being a thief or burning something down, I mean, you're going to have to answer for that later, probably. <clears throat> What about if you hear screaming, or you hear a gunshot or something, yelling, a man yelling, you hear a woman screaming, and you hear a gunshot or something. You run over there, and a man is dead. He's laying there dead. And he claim, she claims that he tried to rape her, and she was defending himself. So she shot him, and he's dead. Right? You can't confirm this, and the only other party is dead. Right? Without forensics, you know, you couldn't prove anything, right? Let's, there's two scenarios. Let's say, first scenario, we'll just say that she, it was a murder, right? Because people were looking for food. That's probably, I, I see that, you know, being likely that somebody would get murdered for food. So, let's say she goes there he's, and uh, she's looking for food. And then she tries to take it. He tries to stop her. She kills him. And then she claims she was raped and, you know, she killed the guy. Or, scenario B, she goes there asking for food. He says, yeah, sure, come on in. She comes in. He tries to rape her. And, like she said, she defends herself and kills him. You don't know. You can go either way. You don't know. Desperate times call, you know, make people do desperate things. Maybe she did that, or maybe she's being honest and just went over there desperately asked for food because she needed it. You don't know. Let's look at, uh, look, at, look at law enforcement in the Old West. It was mostly word of mouth, man. You needed witnesses or a confession, right? But witnesses, you know, can be bribed or they can lie, you know, favoritism. <clears throat> and look at just other security. Let's say that one guy in, in, is... You, it's not you that see that. Some other guy sees that. Runs into the two guys fighting. And one guy just kept to himself, you know, uh, I don't know, just say lawyer because most people don't like lawyers, okay? So he's a lawyer. He keeps to himself and he's in, in his own home. He doesn't really come out much, talk to anybody much. And the other guy is heads with the security guy. His best buddy, his drinking buddies, uh, that hangs out with the security guy. Who do you think that security guy is going to lean towards, right? There's going to be favoritism like crazy. Right? So witness can, can be tampered with. Confessions, you know, you can force somebody. What if, you, you know, somebody's forced, hey, you better say this or, you know, we're going to take your family out or something. You never know. Like in the old days, word of mouth or witnesses. Uh, uh, was it confessions or witnesses? Let's look at the old gumshoe detective, man. Solving crimes, lots of, you know, lots of crimes solved. Used with lots of intuition or hunches. How many times do you think those hunches and, you know, in, his intuition was off, man? And somebody's life was just totally screwed up and devastated because, you know, his hunch was totally off. If you look at what's going on now, today with DNA testing, how many people were being found innocent after years of being wrongly imprisoned? There's a ton. I forget, it was like, I, forget I looked it up one time. It was like 20-something percent. I should have checked it out before I made this video. But, uh, you know, a high 20, maybe, you know, upwards of 20 percent. Found innocent after years, and these guys have been, you know, convicted, say, you know, 10, 15, 20 years or so. And that, I mean, just 20 years back, we're talking about modern times. Right? So, you want to be a civilian sheepdog, okay. But it may not be that easy. Right? Especially without forensics, especially, you know, you never know. Because... Security is probably going to be somewhat of a police force, too. Enforcement of community rules or something. But you're going to have to answer for that. All that when it's over with. Let's say, you know, somebody, you hear some screaming and yelling. You go into a place. 
And even if you're right, you know, this guy just, you know, killed a couple people. He's attacking a man or a woman and you shoot him. Even though, even though you, you, you protected the person that's being attacked, most likely, you don't know for sure which side that was. Or maybe if it's a stranger, you assume it's a stranger, I'm sure. But afterwards, let's say it takes a while, months, a year or two, things go back to normal. And, you know, there's going to be a lot. To, I mean, you're going to say, oh, there's so much stuff that's going to happen. You know, you, you can't guarantee that you wouldn't be put on trial eventually. Right? You couldn't guarantee. Of course, you'd have that witness assuming you can get in, uh, in touch with them. But maybe somebody else that didn't like you or somebody saw you, you know, where you bury them or something. And, you know, they, they match it up to your fire. You never know. So, like I said, you know, the saying is if you want to play like a big dog, you got to pay like a big dog. So... You got people that are falsely imprisoned. Well, you know, you make a mistake, man. It could be your ass. Right? Anyway, just something to think about. Because really, a civilian sheepdog, I mean, you know, some of you get upset, but I mean, it's not really much different from a vigilante. Right? Of course, if it's a community that sets things up, eh, it's a little bit different, but... I mean, still, you know, there's not too much differences. Hopefully you get the uh, okay from the community and, they, you know, you guys are together on that. But still, somebody out there making decisions and taking action, uh, you know, not really that different from a vigilante. Okay, so a group of people, you know, how many people are going to decide, you know, you got 100 people in the community, oh, that's too many. Let's say you got... 50 people in this community. Now, how many does it take to, you know, this is what we're going to do here? I mean, do you have the right to, uh, you know, this guy lives in the middle of the town, or your little community. He don't want to have any part of that, but he lives there. You know, okay, I was here before this. I didn't agree to this. I mean, you got the right to tell him what's what? I mean, it just so happens. He could always leave town. Yeah, but he that's his house. You know? Do you have the right to just be like, hey, look, this is the way it is now? Or can you have some guy there just doesn't, he goes by his own rules? There's a lot of things to that, man. I mean, there's a lot. I just, you know, was thinking about this, sat down, had a drink, and made this video on a whim. I'm sure there's lots of other things that could, you know, be thrown into that. And the consequences, if you're wrong, man, could be your ass. So just something to think about. I, you know, I respect the guy that wants to try to help out, but just like, uh, let's say, um, what do you call it? Citizen's arrest. Man, that's one of the first things they tell you is you better be able to face the consequences because you do and don't have the authority. You know, it's pretty, pretty wide gray line on that. If you have the right to detain somebody. If you're wrong, there's hell to pay. So they say you better be able to, you know, be willing to face the consequences. That's number one. It's pretty much the same thing because in a lot of ways, it's, it's the same thing. A civilian sheepdog... Uh, on his own is a vigilante. A civilian sheepdog with the approval of his community is, you know, you basically, that's a citizen's arrest. What if things are short term? Then you're going to answer for all this stuff that you did, you know? It's only a couple weeks or a month. It ain't that long. Things are straightened out. Well, you know, again, if you're wrong, it's your ass. So do it wisely and you got to have you know, the okay of others. Come together as a community because uh, there's, there's lots to think about there, man. Like I say, look at all the shit that happened before and just, you know, a couple years ago, how many people were wrongly in prison? That's in prison. We're not talking about WROs where, where somebody can get shot and killed, you know. That's the ultimate mistake, man. You know, you, uh, a death sentence for something you didn't even do or you were framed or something without forensics, man. And you better make sure you can, you know, what if you find out you're wrong? You're going to be able to sleep at night, man. We just, you know, we killed this guy. He was totally innocent after all. You know, and then when things go back to normal, man, it's your ass. So like um, citizens uh, arrest, man, you better be able to uh, be willing to pay the consequences or don't get involved in that. You can say, hey, look, I, um, I'll be part of the defense team against uh, invading forces or something, but I'm not going to be... Uh, part of any kind of 
law enforcement or enforcement of rules here. You know, something to think about. That'd be my stance on that. You know, if somebody wants to go around and be a security guy, that's fine. I wouldn't do that. I would just say, look, you know, I'm here. I help out with other stuff. You know, of course, if there's people attacking, I'm in. I'm gonna, of course, you got to fight them off. You have to because you have to work together first off. And number two, you can't do it alone, you know. So anyway, something to think about, guys. Hopefully, this gets the wheels turning. And if that's you... If you accept that, man, like I say, just be willing to face the consequences if you're wrong. Make uh, Think about that when you make your judgments. And make decisions out there. All right. Anyway, y'all have a good one. I'm out.